Well, chemistry ain't about nothing if it ain't about graphing stuff. So here's the deal. We can take Le Chatelier's principle, understand that, and when we know about how reactions shift, we can graphically represent them. And look at this. Blech, that's graphic, all right. So here we're taking a reaction, which is, let's say carbon monoxide gas plus chlorine makes a chemical called uh, COCl2. <laughs> okay. And they're all gases. And we happen to know that it's an endothermic reaction. So let's say initially we start off, well, let's not say anything. Let's just look at the graph and see what it's telling us. We're graphing concentrations of these chemicals versus time. And I'm going to put the time in milliseconds or something like that because really these things happen pretty quickly. Now, we've got initially in a flask, as you can see, CO and Cl2 at initial concentrations, whatever they are, and a COCl2 starting off at zero. So we know that the reaction has to shift to the right to make some of that chemical that we have nothing of. So here we go. We're starting to accumulate COCl2 and decreasing in concentrations of the two reactants until we come to a point where the concentrations are remaining constant over time for these chemicals. So right here at about, oh, I don't know, let's call that 10 milliseconds or so, that's where we have now established equilibrium. And if we actually took the concentrations, whatever they were, here, here, and here, right? Right across from here, here, and here, we take these concentrations and we put them into that equilibrium expression, we can calculate the K value for that reaction. Right. Now, what's happening here? We're going along at equilibrium, and at about 15 seconds, let's say, boom, we get a spike of something. And that spike means we've added that concentration. If there's one thing that gets a spike, what we've done is we've added that chemical to the reaction. So look, Le Chatelier, if we added this react, uh, reactant right here, which way would the reaction shift? It would shift to the right. So what actually happens here? We have an increase in COCl2 because it's making more of that chemical, and a decrease in Cl2, and a decrease in CO after we added that Cl2 because the reaction shifted that way. And then we've reestablished equilibrium at, well, let's say like the 17 seconds here or something like that. Now, here's the deal. If you took all of these concentrations here and put them into the equilibrium expression, you would get the same number if you put these concentrations in because we had a concentration change here, so the K value stays the same. And any good graph would have numbers here that would line up that would give you the same exact K value because just concentrations changed. Okay, now what's happening? Now let's say this is 20 seconds right here. So at 20 seconds, uh oh, it looks like we had a spike in the opposite direction. So we took out COCl2. If you take out this chemical, the reaction shifts to the right to make more of it. So up it comes in terms of concentrations, but these guys decrease because the reaction shifted to the right. Zzz, zzz. And all of these concentrations here, when we establish the equilibrium, we'll give the same K value that these concentrations gave and these concentrations gave. Right. Now what's happening when you see smooth lines and no spikes in either direction for the chemicals? I'm going to tell you that that will signify a temperature change. So now, what, if the temperature is changing and it's an endothermic reaction, what's happening? Is it being warmed or cooled? Let's think. The concentration of the CO and the Cl2 is going up and the concentration of this is going down. So that means what? That the reaction is shifting to the side this way. This way, it's making more of this, more of this, and less of this, so shifting this way, so you are removing heat. So in this endothermic reaction, the reaction vessel is being cooled at whatever time that is, and oh, that was 25 seconds that that was occurring at. But at 27 seconds, if you were to take these equilibrium concentrations and plug them into the expression, they'd be different than the other three times you did that because you just changed the temperature and K values are temperature dependent. Hey, you know what I never mentioned before? Yeah, we've got time on the axis here right now to describe the, the, this reaction in terms of an expanse of time that it would take to happen. K values in this unit of study, equilibrium constants, don't tell you anything about the speed of a reaction, does it? Because you, you understand that. You've done all the K calculations, and you see it's always concentrations or pressures over other pressures. It has nothing to do with rates. It has nothing to do with time. Equilibrium 
is completely, as a unit of study, completely independent of rates of reaction. So don't think the K value tells you about how fast, oh look at that large K value, it must be a fast reaction. That's dumb. It just means that there's more products at equilibrium than reactants. That's what a large K value means. A small K value means you have more reactants at equilibrium than products. That's what they mean. And by the way, if K equals 1, you have a situation, which is very rare, that you have a concentration of products and reactants that equals 1, that they're going to be the same at equilibrium. Hey, what happens if they all spike? That looks crazy. If they all spike, you probably, you probably didn't add all three of these chemicals, although you could have. Probably what happened was you had an increase in pressure. Get it? Because when you increase the pressure, the concentrations all jump of all the chemicals right away. Toink, toink, toink. And so when that happens, generally it's a pressure change. Now, how does the reaction respond here? If you actually increase the pressure, which is increasing the concentrations of everything, that's why all the concentrations went up, then you shift to the side where there are less moles of gas. And so the reaction shifts to the COCl2, because there's only one mole of that, but two moles of gas here, shifts to the right, and therefore less Cl, CO, less Cl2, but an increase in the COCl2 because the reaction shifted that way. That's how you read these equilibrium graphs.